boy oh boy do I have plans for today and it's all going to revolve around more Batania um, to be able to get some of the great items that we're going to use in the vaults well we have to expand our Batania not stay in the overworld realm we have to venture out and explore different lands question mark uh yeah we have to go explore or not really explore trade knowledge yeah we have to trade knowledge <laughs> so it's gonna be kind of interesting but we have to uh basically open up a portal and that portal is going to lead to a different place however we cannot visit that place sadly i wish we could but at least we can trade knowledge back and forth and items and uh, those items are going to be very very useful moving forward so let's get started um everything we need is in this box we're getting started or should be um, i'm gonna need my runic altar i'm gonna go ahead and place this bad boy right here and i'm just gonna have to point a few wands or a few of these mana spreaders at it because we need to feed it some things uh one of those things is going to be living rock and then we have to feed it these items um, so right here, let's go ahead and just start off right off the bat. Um, I have to put all of these items into it. And I can do that by dropping them on, which is probably the best way to do it, is probably just dropping them directly on here. So to do that, we just simply stand here and toss them all onto the altar. Once they're tossed on there, it's going to start. And then we need to take a living rock, right click the living rock onto it. And then once that little bar on the right fills up with mana, we should be ready to go. And then we'll just right click this and that will create our first rune. Oh boy, rune crafting already. Boy, we're starting off strong. So almost done, it is slightly there. If I had more mana spreaders on it, it would probably work a little faster. Don't know if these will reach. Uh, they might. If anything, they'll, they'll end up going into here. So there we go, it's ready to go. Right click and we get ourselves our first rune, which is weird because usually you get two runes. <laughs> so they've made it kind of expensive. Um, yeah, you, use, you normally get two runes for your one craft, but in this you only get one. So yeah, it's definitely been made a little bit more difficult. Now I haven't just made these runes for no reason. We're going to be taking them and making a agglomeration plate. So we have the terrestrial agglomeration plate. Um, this thing right here is going to consume all the runes I just made. So I've made the mana rune. I mean, all these runes are, are actually really cheap on the, the, the side. They're just usually you get two of them. So I've, I've made two of each, but normally one recipe would give you two of them. Um, and so I'm hoping that later on when you use these runes in other rune crafting, it doesn't consume the runes because normally it doesn't consume the runes, but because these are custom recipes, it may actually consume the runes. And that would be incredibly painful because rune crafting is sometimes just tedious because of all the things you have to pull out. Um, refined storage helps with it because you can actually like open refined storage and hit the plus button, it'll pull all these items out of your storage into the crafting grid. And then you can just pull them out and you're ready to go. But for me, I have to do them all individually. But let's go ahead and make this thing. It's actually pretty simple. Like we should have literally everything we need to make this plate. Uh, let's see, I have all the mana steel right here. So a block of mana steel. And then this plate, bam, we, we're done. We have it. Um, and so we need to make an area. I'm going to use this place right here. And uh, all we have to do is break a few blocks. And this is going to be where we actually make our terra steel. Now, uh, the way this works is we have blocks like this. And then this block in the middle. And then on the outside is actually lapis. And we should have enough blocks. to Just go ahead and place it. So this is the multi-block just like this. And then the last piece of that multi-block is the plate. And so this is where we're going to make Terra Steel. <laughs> Moving forward, we are making Terra Steel right here. Now, the other thing we're going to need is sparks. Um, sparks are pretty simple to make and are going to be the best way to transfer mana from a mana pool to this plate. So you right click the spark on there. And then like right here, I put the spark on the mana pool and it's hovering over this mana pool. 
And so when I go to craft anything, it's going to pull the mana from this pool to this plate. And if I have multiple um, of these on all of the mana pools that I have, then uh, it will do the same thing. It'll pull from all the pools to this one. So sparks, incredibly useful. So I'm going to go ahead on the bottom layer. And I, these do have a range, by the way. I think they're like 16 blocks. So they don't, they're not, they don't go super far. Um, but they are far enough that this should work. And then after we get this, we can actually make dominant recessive uh, sparks and hopefully make ourselves a mana battery. That's going to be like the ultimate goal. So we can have a nice storage of mana whenever we need it. So let's see what this recipe for Terra Steel is. Because we only need one Terra Steel. And uh, it should be right here. All right, Terra Steel. This stuff is going to require. Um, some Vaulterite ingots, a Vault Diamond, Vault Essence, another Vault Diamond, Mana Steel, and Enderpearl. So the recipe is not super horrible, but it does require two of the three Vault Diamonds that I currently have. So I have everything I need in my inventory. I just have to turn one of these into a Mana Diamond. Yes, Mana Diamonds normally are just diamonds, but in this one, they cost a Vault Diamond. Um, also, I'm going to test, it should consume one full mana pool, uh, but normally Terra Steel would only use half a mana pool. So it's kind of interesting that they've changed that as well, but I'm just going to right click all of this onto here. Also, I need to turn this into a mana pearl. Right click that, and then this. This, and last but not least, this. And you should see all of that mana being transferred. And... Tear still. And I think it's still, yeah, only used a half a mana pool. So if we take a look, it used one eighth of all the mana pools, which means, yes, it's still only using a half a mana pool, which is still good. But the vault diamonds, oh, it's still kind of expensive for the vault diamonds for the steel. But now we can move forward. All I need is this amount of nuggets, and we should be good. I think we have everything. We may have to run a vault or two. Uh, I did check, and uh, for the most part, I think we were clear. Um, the only thing we need to check on is the pylons. All right, before we hit this vault, I, I do want to open all this gear that we got from running all the crazy vaults before. I mean, we've, we're bound to get something from this, right? Like, come on. Like, uh, I mean, it doesn't look like anything super, super great so far. I don't know. I wish maybe... It, It'd make a different sound if it, like, rolled something epic. It's rolling commons. Oh, goodness. It's gonna be... It's too much rolling through all of this gear. There's just too much gear. All the party horns. And I still have more gear than this. Don't get me wrong. There's still more. Oh, my gosh. So, out of all of the stuff that's been popping going off here, let's see... Okay, so all of my gear in here. Let's just take a look at everything I rolled. Let's see if we can sort this. Perfect. Scrappy, scrappy, scrappy. Nothing looks good. That has leech on it. Eh, it's okay. We got banana boots. I don't really know what those are, but those look kind of cool. I actually want to take a look at those. Um, got a common, scrappy, an epic. Interesting. I'll take a look at this. Um, ooh, that, okay, 1.1. 1 .1. A common. That's kind of a cool looking chess piece, though. Uh, nothing else here. We got, uh, poison immunity. Uh, another common. Wow, out of all of this, just common. There's a couple of health, different ones. Soulbound. And a bunch of junk. Wow. Out of all that junk. Um, what does this look like, though? <laughs> it's kind of like a wooly chest piece. And then the banana boots. These totally look like bananas. That's funny. I still love my set, man. My... My vault set is so cool looking. All right, well, that's a bunch of scrap, and you know what that ends up going to... That's going to end up just uh, being dumped mostly in here. Uh, most of the armor, I think, uh, is going to be... Yeah, just dropped right down in there. Same with the swords. I think the swords need to be all just smelted down. These need to be smelted down. All of these are scrappy. This is a rare. I still don't think that matters too much. I mean, we can test out the rare. We'll see what that is. That's actually kind of a nice-ish sword. We'll see. We'll see what that rules. This is a common, common. We can go and smelt those down. And so on and so forth. I'll keep the idols. 
so I believe I have crafted the mother of all catalysts. Uh, this one right here. Uh, yeah. I think this is going to be a pretty fun run. Gilded, trapped, super healing, super speed, withering, easy, crowded, plentiful, faster, safe zone, and hard. All of that coming from just a few of the vault catalysts. Uh, this is going to be a fun thing to run. Um, so one of the things I'm definitely going to need is something to prevent the withering. Right, this uh, mobs have a chance of applying withering on hit. You know what? I may just leave the idol that I have and not really worry about. Actually, you know what? We don't want withering. Um, so, uh, vault. I think I have one that uh, will prevent it. And that should save us a little bit. Yeah, I think we have one that definitely has wither immunity. Yeah, remember this one? This is the one that we rolled. That was the other, that, that was that rare that we have. Ah, yes. So, books, let's grab an unbreaking. I should have one laying around here somewhere. And that's all we gotta do. We'll just throw that on there. And we're good to go. There's a mending and there's an unbreaking. Perfect. Ah, the beauty of this. Perfect. And uh, we'll make sure to keep the, the epic stored away somewhere safe. Yeah, this one's our slowness immunity, and we'll make sure to put that in our special box. Perfect. Iron Golem, how did you get over here? I have no idea. Man, it's going to be so weird going in without a magnet. I mean, we have a magnet, but it's a different kind of magnet. Let's do this. I am ready to run this vault. This vault looks so good. All right. This is a massive vault. I don't know if we are going to be completing that objective. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not really worried, but I'm here to be vault diamonds. I am not here to be completing a objective like that. We're heading north and by the way, I should check these and check down here. You know what's going to mess with our loot? The fact that this is what it is. Oh, yeah, these guys are gonna be a little bit more difficult, but you know what? I am going to be happy. Ooh, that dropping out of there. My magnet, does my magnet not work in the vaults? It does. But the magnets are a little different dropping out. They don't instantly get picked up. That might be a problem. I don't know, we'll find out. This right here is bound. Oh, to get me vault diamonds. I feel like I just got a vault diamond. No, I didn't. Okay. We have poison immunity, by the way. I'm not even scared of that witch anymore. Ooh, two vault diamonds just in that chest alone. Uh, yes, please. Yes. Okay, why is my magnet... Okay, the magnet does work. It's so delayed. It feels so weird in here. <laughs> what was that? What is this? A whiskal? Is this some new mob? I don't have a clue what that thing is. It's horrifying sounding. It is so loud. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so many vault diamonds. Oh, I love this. This gilded run is good. Good, good, good. I would get all those things, but we also have crowded and everything else is going on here. Grab that, head back. And just like that, we are out of the vaults. And uh, yeah, uh, five vault diamonds. Uh, that's that's pretty good. That's more than I was expecting to get out of that vault. Uh, not to mention, we may actually get them from this as well. Crystal, Mega Torch, Vault Bronze, and Vault Burger. Oh, so we didn't get any from that, but that's okay. Woo, man, what a run. That was so much fun. No, wait, we get six vault diamonds out of this, not five. I was wrong. My bad. We got six. Oh, that is going to allow us to complete everything I needed to complete today. That's awesome. So now that I'm out of the vault, I think we should be able to make these pylons. So, Batania, pylons. Perfect. So I have this. Uh, we need two mana diamonds. So, diamonds. Not regular diamonds, though. These vault diamonds. So we now have seven total vault diamonds. Those are going to uh, come in handy because we're going to have to have those. Let's drop that and that. Let's go ahead and make these. Normally I wouldn't show the recipes, but like this stuff, yeah, I kind of need, I don't know. I kind of want to show how much, how much different it is because these are some pretty expensive recipes. Maybe wondering like, why haven't I just jumped right in 
to all of the stuff, and this is why. I mean, it is kind of up there in the cost. That's the cost department is just pretty expensive. Um, so let's make some mana pools. I'm gonna do two more mana pools. So let's get some Beniotite. Two mana pools. And uh, I'm gonna be transferring mana in a weird way. I'm gonna be using my um, mana tablet, basically. Um, and right here, I'm gonna place my mana pool here and here. And this right here is where the portal is actually going to be placed. Um, so these uh, these Atura pylons, they need to be placed directly on top of the mana pools. Uh, but before we do that, I need to get these mana pools with a little bit of mana in them. So as you can see, three of our Terra still is going to be used right here. Bam, to make the Elven Gateway core. This requires the black opals. So I have those for the glimmering. Everything else is just regular living wood. So let's go ahead and grab our living wood and build this portal. It's it's actually not too bad. Um, so this right here goes right in the center. Then we have living wood on both sides. You can go ahead and frame it out. I like to frame it out just because that's just me. Up and then go up one more. Technically, let's see, pop up, there we go. Over. Another glimmering, you're gonna put those on like all the sides. Another here, glimmering, and then voila, just like that. And then you can go ahead and remove the sides if you want. Uh, but another cool thing that I like to do is, let's go ahead and take this, is make stairs. Like you can just make stairs with this. And four of those should work. Oh wait, my bad. <laughs> Wow, how did I not see this? I built this thing so wonky. So yeah, it goes like this, then up. Wow, I built that kind of weird, didn't I? Then like this. Go ahead and get that wood in there. Wood here. Like that. And it kind of makes it look like a little circle. Look at that. Perfect. And there we go. We have ourselves a gateway. And all we gotta do is put the Natura pylons. I have about half a mana pool full here. And half a mana pool full here, if I can place these on top. There we go. And to activate it, hit it with the wand of the forest right in the center. And voila, the world is calling. And we are about to communicate with the elven dimension. So we just need to, to communicate. Let's share our knowledge with them. And hopefully in return, they will share the knowledge back. We can, one can only hope. And there we go. New chapters unlocked in our Lexica Batania, which is really helpful, so you don't have to go to the wiki all the time. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the only thing that's going to uh, move forward that's going to be locked is stuff that is locked behind the Gaia Guardian. So we should have just about everything now unlocked. Look at all the flowers and stuff. And uh, basically anything that I want to know is all right here, which is perfect. Now, there's a couple things I want to make. I want to make the Benevolent Goddess Charm. That's going to prevent creepers from going boom. We hit control. We can see that. Right here is a trinket. Uh, when worn, it uses mana to prevent explosions in the wearer's vicinity uh, from damage to any blocks in the world. So it will prevent creepers from blowing up blocks, which is a pain in the vaults. Um, and then we also have the Sojourner Sash. So the Sojourner Sash is uh, hard to say for one thing. Uh, but it's going to allow me to step up blocks. And during the live stream, I ended up getting one of the regret bottles for step. Um, so you can actually roll these. Um, and uh, that's what I did. So to make this, I did this recipe and I, I made it over and over again uh, using some of the ones that we had. Um, and yeah, I got lucky. And so uh, we do have step in here it, right here. So this is step. And what's it gonna do is it's going to give me back my five points that I invested in step, giving me back five skill points. I'm ready for that. And then we have this. So this is the pyro class pendant. And this is going to prevent me from getting set on fire. Yeah, that, that really annoying thing that happens to me all the time. This right here is gonna prevent that. Mana weave is really easy. It's just string, but we do have two pogs. This is also gonna require a pog. And this is going to require a mana diamond. So the only other things I have to make are just some of the runes. 
and I'm going to get those all crafted up. And let's see if we have three pogs. We should easily be able to make three pogs. Well, I'm about to find out. I'm making the summer rune. I'm about to find out if this recipe actually consumes the runes or not. Because if they do, oof. But normally they don't consume the runes. So uh, when rune crafting, yeah, it doesn't consume it. But it might because these are custom recipes. <laughs> you never know. You just never know. Let's try this out and hope it spares them. Oh, thank goodness it spares them. Oh, that's what I was hoping. So I'm almost, almost done. Uh, I am, I do want to make one other item along with the three that I have here. And that is the rod of the shifting crust. You're wondering what is, well, what is that? It's actually a block exchanger and uh, it's really nice. Like having a block exchanger, ah, that's, I mean, that's another utility that is really nice. Um, now, some of these other wands are definitely worth having. It'd be really nice to have some of these, but for right now, I'm going to go with the Rod of Shifting Crust. I think another item that uh, would be nice is probably the World Shaper, uh, but as you can see, that's uh, later on. We have to fight the Gaia Guardian, and I really don't know how fighting the Gaia Guardian is going to go in this. So, uh, I'm making sloths, so I need Air and Autumn. Air, Autumn. These are the last two pieces for this. Thankfully, these don't get consumed. Oh, that's so nice. Uh, and you want to make these before you craft anything else. Make your runes, uh, because otherwise you're going to have to make the base ones again. I'm going to have to make. I'm going to have to make them again anyway, especially after making these items. But at least we'll be able to get all three of these items, or all four of these items, and uh, this is going to be really nice. So I'm setting up to make one more Terra Steel. Um, so I'm going to need this Terra Steel. Uh, to be able to make the pendant, but I also need it for the Sojourner Sash, but unfortunately, I am out of mana diamonds. Uh, because I made the Rod of the Shifting Crust, uh, that costed two of my mana diamonds that I would have had to make the Sojourner Sash. Believe me, I will make this. At the moment, it's not super necessary, as I already have Step Up, so I will use it. Uh, I will end up making it. Give me the Step Up to allow me to get my skill points back that I could use on really anything. Um, but yeah, the shifting crust should be pretty nice, and we have this, and the only thing I need is some string. Let's do a stack of string in here. That should be plenty. Throw that in there. That's going to spew out. By the way, also, mana is so nice to be able to make things like uh, mana glass, which mana glass is so, so cool. All right, so we just need four of these, two pogs, and we are about to make, let's see, Batania... We are about to make this. Where's that charm at? This charm, which prevents explosions. So, boop. And that does consume our runes, as you've seen. Um, and then we need to make the pendant. And the pendant, boop, is going to prevent us from taking fire damage. Like, it's going to um, extinguish us. And so this goes in the charm slot. This goes in the necklace slot. And, well... We're a little bit safer now in the vault, I would have to say. We're no longer going to be taking that random tick damage that you would normally take from all the stuffs. So, really, really nice that we have these pendants now. And of course, I, I don't know, we might end up making something else. We could see. So you may be wondering, Chosen, why did you make the Rod of Shifting Cross? Like, what exactly does this do? Well, notice all this dirt down here, and let's just say I want to replace it with concrete, right? So I just search up some concrete and we have some right down here. Actually, this is rebar concrete block. It might be actually pretty low on regular concrete. Let's see, maybe we can try another block. Uh, well, anyways, let's just turn it into stone, right? Uh, because we have plenty of stone. And so all I gotta do is go in here, find some stone, place said stone or just find stone and shift right click. And you notice it's going to say how much stone I currently have. And this is four times 64. And then right here, if I right click, well, it's going to replace this grass that's in the area. It seems like even underground with all of this. Yep. And it's going to tell me how much stone I currently have left in my inventory while doing so. So it's a really nice exchanging tool. It's, it's, it is really nice. Like, I, I love this. And that's why I wanted to make it, because I have had some situations where I just wanted to replace what was around, and it's really nice. Now, if you want to just make it a smaller area, you activate this thing called the Stone of Temperance, and what it's going to do is it actually makes the area smaller. This also works on the Terra Shatterer. 
Um, so stone, and we just pull some more stone in here. And what this is going to do is this is just going to do a smaller area at a time. So you notice, and it, I think it's dependent on the way you look at things as well. For example, you see it went in a line like that. Yeah. So it'll also go like that. So kind of interesting. It does it in a different sort of direction <laughs> per se. Uh, and like I can swap this back. All of this good stuff. It's so weird on, on how, what direction it's facing. That, I will say, very interesting. Boom. Perfect. So there is one last thing that I must do as I was reading through Batania book. And uh, that I must do before we run another vault and test out the new gear that we have. And uh, that is, well... Yep. You know exactly what we're doing. Yep, we're, we're doing this. Uh, boop. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to take this real quick. We're just going to go over here. Uh, let's see. I, I don't know if... I don't think I have any custom effects. But if I did, that'd be pretty nice. But I don't. Um, see, I don't know who would have... Who would have a custom... You know what? Let's just name this... Um, Stumpy. Not like Stumpy Cat, but like Stumpy. You know, it's named Stumpy for right now. And this is going to be our little friend. Can we place it on a chest? We can. So this is Stumpy. And uh, we can actually give it... I don't know. Uh, we can give it a tool. Uh, let's give it a hoe. And there we go. Uh, it's friends. So as you can see, it's holding my hoe. Yep, it'll hold it on its face. And if you get down underneath it... It can also hold things onto the bottom of it, technically. It can even wear it as a little hat. Look at that. So, uh, let's give it the hoe, like that. Um, and I also wonder... Uh, if we can give it a pure daisy. Well, let's go ahead and test out our gear. It's time to run a random vault. Let's do this. And we get plentiful. Oh. That's just, that's just too nice. Too nice of this vault. First obelisk. Oh, it is so nice not have to worry about the creeper explosions. Oh, this is fantastic. Like the creepers, I just went into a, like a little area. They fell down and they, I didn't explode. What? That's too good. Oh, this is, this is becoming nice. Oh, please be lucky. Nope. Now, being set on fire is something that happens, but... Do I still take damage from lava? Yes, but I get immediately extinguished afterwards, so... Yeah, lava's still kind of scary. Just not as scary, I guess. The perfect room for Plentiful. There's the next obelisk. Uh, we might be able to do this. And the third obelisk. Oh boy, another room that could be kind of promising. All depends. Hmm, we'll see. And, nope. Maybe this room will be lucky? No. Is this going to be another lucky one? I mean, maybe, maybe this one? Is this one going to have anything? Ah. <sighs> Three. Three of them and literally nothing. A, a fourth one, maybe? Any Anything? Oh, this has two. This was worth it. All of it. Worth it right here. Wow. So I have three minutes to find an obelisk or I fail this. Hmm. I mean, I don't necessarily fail it, but I would like to find the obelisk, but it's probably not going to happen. I mean, I might find it. This looks like one right here. Oh boy, it is. Oh, we're doing this. You're, you're dying in the water. You're dying in the water. Get wrecked. 
right at the last minute. High five. You can give, yeah, you can give him a high five. Boom. Five. And just like that, another boss crate. Ooh, with some nice armor. Looks like we can roll some armor. But the good news, four more vault diamonds. You know what? I can't complain. What do we get here? Vault sword. Vault bronze. Yep, just like I said, cannot complain. So I still know there is a ton more in Batania, of course, to go over and things for us to, of course, make all the utility stuff there. I mean, there's there's a lot. This mod like really is going to open up vault running and making the runs a little bit quicker. Uh, but of course, that's all to come and it's going to take some time. Of course, we got to run some more vaults, get more vault diamonds, of course, be able to make some more Terra steel and all that fun jazz. But of course, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, of course, click that subscribe button. And while you're at it, join the Discord. Uh, speaking of Discord, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks going to Barkerum over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member. And of course, guys, if you are interested in joining the Discord, all you gotta do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And while you're at it, while you're checking out that amazing Discord, be sure to check out the merch store. All you gotta do is go to chosen.store. Super simple as well. And grab yourself some nice merch. There's some nice stuff for the summer. Get yourself a nice Chosen Architect t-shirt. That'd be really awesome. And I'd really appreciate it. And guys, of course, another way to support this video is by clicking that thumbs up and clicking that subscribe button. Of course, if you would and you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it. You guys have a great day. And as always, thanks for watching.